Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk about all things Commander. And this week, we are talking about secret tech cards. Maybe some underplayed gems, maybe they do something specific, maybe they battle a specific strategy in your group, or maybe they're just obscure, fun cards we want to show off. So we have 12 tech cards for you here today. And before we get into that, let me introduce my co-host. We have Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Richard. How are you? I'm doing well. Tomer, budget commander. Uh, where's the plant? Your your scenery keeps changing. Is the plant still alive? The plants are fine. <laughs> They're not here. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> I need to see uh, pictures with the newspaper. <laughs> okay, so I so I, I was jumping back and forth between Paris and, and here, and I moved all my plants into a central location so my friend could water them once a week, and then I might have forgot to put them back but they're fine i assure you <laughs> trust me and grim the asian avenger how are you doing hi i'm great i'm excited lots of uh sweet stuff to talk about uh from from actually my my lists are mostly new cards so i'm pretty excited all right so before we get into our secret tech cards uh today's show is brought to you by card conduit the easiest way to sell your magic cards so card conduit lets you skip all the typing time and work associated with buy listing you can send in as many cards as you want with buy list value one dollar more and you'll pay just a five percent service fee and you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay only a two percent service fee so no matter which option you'll choose you'll get a detailed report with the result and fast payment once your order is processed so head over to cardconvent.com slash mtggoldfish and you can get 10% off today. So thank you for sponsoring our show. And remember to like, follow, subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening or watching on. We would greatly appreciate it. So today we have secret tech cards. Seth, hit us off with the first secret tech card you have for us. Okay, this card, it, it blows my mind this card doesn't get more respect. And uh, that card is Obscuring Haze. So Obscuring Haze, it's part of that really busted Commander 2020 cycle that has kind of, like, broke the format. It's the green one that no one knows about. It's a three-minute instant. You can cast it for free if you have your Commander. And it says prevent all damage that would be dealt this turn by creatures your opponents control. So this is a fog. I think fogs in general are super secret tech cards in Commander because for a really low price, they stop potentially tens or hundreds of damage coming at you, which is really, really powerful. Like, it is a way that you can deal with Voltron threats, you can deal with a huge swarm, it's good against Go Tall, it's good against Go Wide. And this card, in specific, is a really powerful Vog, even outside the fact that you can potentially cast it for free, which makes it even more of a secret tech, you can be completely tapped out, and as long as you have your commander, you can still fog the board. The way it's worded makes it even more powerful than most fogs, because it only prevents the damage that would be dealt by your opponent's creatures this turn. Most fogs, if you look at, like, traditional frog, they just say prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, so it's preventing the damage of your creatures and your opponent's creatures. Obscuring Haze only prevents your opponent's creatures damage, which means if your opponent swings a bunch of stuff into you, you can fog to prevent that damage and probably pick off a creature or two by blocking because your creatures still get to deal damage. If you look at this cycle, Fierce Guardianship's like 60 bucks. Uh, the Deflecting Swat's like 60 bucks. Deadly Rollick's like over 40 bucks. This card's like under $5 still. It just gets no respect compared to the rest of the cycle. And no one plays it. It's in like 1% of decks. And those are typically like Fog style decks like Thanos, like Force Combat decks or Agnes McKenzie. The card really should just be played way, way more. It's it's really good. I mm -hmm. agree. I had constant mists as a card on this list before I saw your obscuring haze, and that's the buyback fog. I think fog as a general class is criminally underrated. It's like a get out of free card, and obscuring haze is get out of free get out of jail free for like no mana and then like maybe one sided wrath your opponent while you're at it. Uh, so I actually really like it as well. And what's the red one? Is that the red the, one's the a swat, right? No, yeah. what's the white one? Oh, the white one. No, white so one's the, indestructible. White one's Wait, indestructible. Yeah, one's one. No, the white one actually the sees a lot of play, fun. but it's only yeah. like twelve dollars because they just reprinted it in the Phyrexia Commander deck. So it's so the only one that actually blue, has been yeah, reprinted. So they're all they all see play except green. So yeah. 
yeah, I think people are missing out on this green one. They really are. I I am the naysayer here. I so, so where does it like I, fog? Like, not a fog. <laughs> you know what? You know what I like more than fogs? Removal. Like <laughs> you send me, you send like some big thing at me. I'm gonna use my swords of plowshares and remove it. Like but I don't what know. If, what if, what if they have many over? big things? I feel like the problem. What with if the they crater hooked you? Okay, yeah. What if they do a lot of things? But like, like even even fogs, I feel like. Like something like an either eyes, I much prefer too, because if they send stuff at me, yeah, it costs four mana, but it puts it resets their entire board in the process. Or ink shield costs five mana, but it turns into a win condition because if you swing with me with like ten power, I have twenty power on the board with flying, and I kill you on my on the backswing. Have- like, I think free man free being free is good, but like. I, it's just very narrow. Like, what if what if somebody swings for me for lethal? Then oh, obscuring case is really good. But like, what if they just combo out? Well, I wish I would have just had removal instead. And also, the removal is <laughs> well, probably going to Rai save me. Do? Yeah, what's no, like, going to do if they combo? <laughs> yeah, but it's at least it's a bigger a bigger swing in my favor. I think like if I really want to be running a fog effect, but I just prefer removal. Like. Uh, a removal spell is going to save me from lethal damage, but it's also going to stop a combo, and it also stops like an insane value player or anything like that. It's just more flexible. So I don't really run Fox. Crim, yeah, what, sure. what's your decision? I, I'm, not high on... On, I'm not high on the fog either. Like it's, I've had it played, and I'm just like that was a dead draw. That was cool, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you you get somebody. I, I, I don't know. I just I guess I'm not a fan of fogs. It's really good when Unless it works. Unless you're a dedicated fog deck, then sure. It just feels really bad when it's like a dead card in your hand. You're like, oh, I wish this was something else. Please. How, oh. how often does that really this... happen, though? Like, if you think about a game of Commander, either you win or someone's going to attack you for lethal eventually. Or I guess the other option is they play some spell-based combo when none of our removal spells actually applies. Like, doesn't matter if it's either eyes, doesn't matter if it's fog. Like, they all are going to do nothing if someone's, you know, storming off and grape-shotting you or whatever. Or, then, or then none of these cards are relevant. just kills you like, a Blood Artist combo, like some, some graveyard loop, you know? Like, they could just... They yeah, do stuff where you can still interact with it. Doesn't do anything there either, though. Yeah, I don't like either eyes either. I'm just saying if I ha- if I was forced to run a fog effect, I would prefer these other ones. I just don't I, like fogs. They're too gotta... situational. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Uh, I don't. I, I was trying to avoid being like the crazy person all the time, but like, <laughs> oh, here it is. It's your role, Richard. Embrace it. Oh, embrace yourself. <laughs> like. The reason you cut source the plowshares is the run of Scurry Case. Like no! you, 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 like this. This is the blanket. Get out. Like Teferi's protection. Think of all the times you just use it as simply a fog. <laughs> like you know, obviously you can use it to protect your board. You can use it to phase out when someone storms off just grape shot you. But a lot of times you just use it as a fog, and you can play a no, free fog or literally a one mana fog. fog. Like the difference between fog and all the solutions you're proposing is they cost more. Like of course, if I like cyclonic rift, I can get rid of the problem, but that's like eight mana, right? Obscuring haze is three. If you pay the real mana cost, it's one, which is you know fog. So the the mana efficiency and the the get at it. Like I I feel. You you save yourself more often with the fog than a swords to plowshares. Like more often than not, there's gonna be a hexproof creature coming at you, or like a wide board or a bunch of tokens, and the fog does a better job. So actually, my my choice of like get out of jail is like actually fog rather than swords to plowshares. But yeah, I I didn't want to go there, guys. But you made me do <laughs> it. No, in, in no in no world would I ever cut swords to plowshares to put in a fog. <laughs> That is, yeah, I, I, I don't, this is why everyone is beyond the realm of reasoning. <laughs> I, I won't even. <laughs> Richard, I mean, there's how, too how much bias because the, the the first thing you're taught when you become good at magic is that fog is bad, and I feel that that is correct in one v one, but it is not the correct answer in multiplayer, and I feel we're all biased by that. Uh, so, yeah, I think fog is a lot better than people give credit for. No, obviously you don't want to play like twenty fogs unless you're turbo fog, right? But like a one one fog or two fogs, I think is actually pretty good. No, and this is the best Dude, of the fogs. This card is almost always. Oh, is it arachnogenesis <laughs> I think better? The best. I think or ink shield. Fog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that uh, I gotta ask you. I gotta wait, wait. Hang on. Ink shields come up a couple times. 
have you ever a single time actually mating shield work? Because I have seen it added to a lot of decks, and I have almost, I don't know if I've ever seen it work. Like, it's five mana. Like, what I see is... It's not available on Magic Online. That's why we've never seen it work, though. (laughs) Like, I have it in my paper. It's so much mana. I know, but it wins you the game. It might, like, if... (sighs) That actually wins you the game. That that one actually does win you the game. It's like you swing at me for like just 10 damage. It doesn't have to be lethal. It could just be 10 damage. And then I, I swing back at you for 20 in the air. Yeah. It's so, it's so yeah, good. But, you get but how are you the, leaving the Orzhov a... player with five mana sitting up? Like you're like, ooh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, okay, like playing around dumb... Ink Shield? That's like, like, I mean, like If you hold five mana as an Orzhov player, yes. <laughs> right? I, no I think, way you're uh, playing around Ink Shield. How to dude. win the game. Step one, play Orzhov. Step two, keep a five mana at all <laughs> times. Yeah. The power I'll take that. Of the... If you want to hold five mana <laughs> the entire game against me, then by yeah. all means, let's play this game. <laughs> I, the power of obscuring haze is it's literally free. Like, like assuming you have your commander, but like, there's such a huge difference between what Richard was saying. The, the Orzhov player with five mana up and the completely tapped out person who just happens to have their commander. Like, those are that's so much different. I think I have the same problem with Arachnogenesis. I was actually like going through the fogs because I knew I wanted to have one <laughs> one on this list, and I consider Arachnogenesis, but that still is like three mana i don't think it's bad but it's still three mana constant miss is good but even that's two mana uh, although the buyback is a big upside so i think this is just like the surprise factor i think makes it so so strong like in the same way that uh that the other members of this cycle are super strong just the ability to do something while you're completely tapped out is a inherently powerful effect. That's why Fierce Guardian, we've talked about Fierce Guardianship so many times, or Deflecting Swat, or, well, you know, whatever. Doesn't this get some credit for just, like, doing that? Something that no other fog can do? But it it's doesn't... It's a fog. It doesn't I mean, deal you don't with like the fog. fog. You don't like free fog, so I, but, yeah, I yeah, see like, their argument, I think, right? Like, I think it doesn't deal with the Would you like a free healing solve? Like, I don't want this. <laughs> like, yeah, like, they still have their board. Like, they can still swing at you the very next turn. So you still need to have some sort of answer to the fact that they can kill you. They, they can swing at, at you for lethal. And then yeah, you, the other problem with this is just, like... It's just not a good card unless it's, it's doming you for lethal, right? Like, if somebody swings at you for 10 and you're at, like, 20, are you going to fog so you're not going to go to 10 and you're going to stay at 20? Well, in that context, eh. it's a removal spell, right? Like, you just play it but and it block their thing anything. and kill it. Is it? Well, well if, you have, if you have creatures, it's it's essentially a removal spell. You just block yeah. and your creatures don't take any damage and theirs do. I guess if oh, you don't know. These guys attacking. would agree with us. You're We're going to have to split off. We'll do our own right. fog yeah, tier I, list I, next we'll week. We'll have our own tier list. <laughs> <laughs> aren't you, aren't you a I don't like fogs. So, It'd be like yeah. S's ink shield and everything else is just <laughs> D. Really I, I actually think Constant Mist is, is a card that most decks cannot beat. Like yeah. you, you, you plop it down and you just constant miss every turn. And if they're not playing blue, they're done for. Like there's a <laughs> lot of decks that just cannot deal with the constant miss every turn, assuming you make your land drops. But yeah. this is not the fog tier list. That's that's the special after hours podcast <laughs> with me and <laughs> Seth. <laughs> I'm down. Uh oh, oh, I have removal too, Tomer. Okay. Do you consider this removal? I so do. my card is dress down. Now dress down. Uh, is a two mana blue enchantment with flash. When it ETBs, you draw a card, and creatures lose all abilities. And at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice dress down. Now, I actually this is... found this on a Reddit post uh, a while back, but it sold me on playing this as your blue removal because. Someone creator hoofs, you dress down. Nothing happens. They dot side, you dress down. Nothing happens. They they eternal witness, reclamation sage, omnath, you just dress down and it stops all of that. If they have like a Voltron up commander, dress down. Like it cycles, it's two mana, it's blue. It it does the thing. But I have a feeling Tomer's not gonna like it because it's temporary <laughs> once again. <laughs> no, I, I love Wait, this card. This card's great. This card sees modern play. Like but it's, it it's only like, saves it's you like, for one but turn. It only saves you for one turn. <laughs> but it's, it's not. No, but I treat it more of a counter spell. Like it's a very situational counter spell. Like you have somebody going for an E wit for the going for the game win or going for the board wipe in their the in their graveyard or yeah, whatever. You just 
you just drop it on the battlefield and it's it's it stifles yes. basically a lot of powerful ETBs. It can it can save you also as a fog or whatever, but I, generally speaking, I see it more of a, a like a, a narrow counter magic that's two mana on an enchantment, which is very cool, and it it draws a card so it replaces itself. I think this card is gas. Yep, I definitely like this card is definitely something I I would love to like play more of and see more of, right? Because it it is exactly like Tomer said, it's a stifle. It replaces itself, but yeah, like it counters a lot of random combos and it's seen in cdh and it's you know obviously great and modern so yeah like why wouldn't this be great yeah i mean just the the drawing a card really makes it the the bar is pretty low if you can trip so it's hard for it to ever really be bad because worst case it cycles for two mana so yeah it's never gonna get stuck in your hand or anything i've definitely been blown out by it in modern i have never really seen it in commander though i'm gonna have to start playing it more Oh, the the times where someone dressed down and killed my uh, there's a domain Tarmogoyf thing, and I'm like, what? It becomes a zero zero yeah. and dies. This is stupid. I hate yeah. you. <laughs> it gets rid of all the Urza but... Saga constructs for the same yeah. reason. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think I think the best one. Was, I am I not think crazy like anymore. Rayhan it's a good thing. <laughs> Somebody played Rayhan, and then another another person played Dress Down, and it answered. It's like a zero zero with entering with plus one plus one counters. And so just entered as a zero zero and die, and I was like, "Got yeah, him, nice. got him." Would you play it if it didn't cycle? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, no, it, it does so much, not. and it cycles on top of that. So you wouldn't play it if it didn't cycle. I am I'm addicted I, to I just card get, draw. I just Richard. play like a, another like like universal answer or something like an anguish and making. Maybe just so you run stifle or something. Well, because yeah, anguish yeah, doesn't one deal mana. with a thoracle or a crater. Hey, host. I guess it doesn't deal with thoracle. No, mm. right? Or like, let's say they have a creature based then, combo or something like dockside or like there, like there's a lot of ETBs and and things. Then counter spell it. You probably run like, like yeah the yeah yeah. I'd probably What's play it's like another counter. I think. Yeah. Unless maybe if I was like Enchantress or something, if I had additional synergies, but I don't think it would. I would consider just a generic like All Star if it didn't draw a card. I'd probably run like Trick Bind or something. The last yeah. split second yeah. uh, stifle effect. Boy, wait, 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 you don't like I, you don't I, like I, fogs because fog. they might get stuck in your hand, <laughs> and you're gonna play stifles. Ooh, well, stifles I'm saying if it didn't, so if it much. didn't draw a card, if it, I don't run it, but like if I really needed that effect on okay. dress down. Then I would want, can, want the one that can stop combos really easily. You can also combo with it. Like, if you want to get your phage in play or something, it can stifle your own negative ETB triggers. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Next level. It's a good card. All right. Tomer, what do you have for us? Okay. So there's a little card. It's a, a sorcery. Um, and this is my style of removal. Like, I'm big on removal. I'm big on ro- uh, board wipes. So fade away. <laughs> it's a three mana sorcery for each creature that creature's control phase one. Is sorry, no, okay. Um, I like Fade Away. All right, so uh, but I've already I've already discussed Fade Away. It's not even a, a secret tech anymore. It is tech, and I have shared it with the <laughs> it world. Just, it doesn't so. count as tech because it doesn't work. <laughs> it yeah. is secret yeah. though. <laughs> it's an all star in my min deck. All right, but there's a new card that actually piqued my interest. And I've been playing it a little bit, and I think this card has a lot of potential, even though it just came out. I think people are kind of sleeping on it. We didn't even talk about it in our top 10 Aftermath cards. Uh, This is Filter Out. This is a three-mana blue instant that says return all non-creature, non-land permanents to their owner's hands. This is a very unique effect in blue, and it's one of the cheapest effects uh, that we've seen in blue as well. Uh, evacuation is something that blue is really good at. Being instant speed bouncing uh, creatures is something that blue is very good at. But they do it at like four mana, five mana. Um, we've never seen bounce all non-creature non-land permanents to their owner's hand, I don't think, in, in blue. But definitely not for three mana. Three mana is exceptionally cheap for this sort of ability. So I was thinking, like, where would I want to run this card? And honestly... I would say like Simic based decks are going to really like this. Anything that's like super creature heavy where you're, you don't have a lot of artifacts on the battlefield. You don't have a lot of enchantments on the battlefield. This card can actually be 
a really great way to just put people behind a lot compared to where you are. Like artifact decks, enchantment decks are not going to have a great time while you have developed the board full of creatures. So this card is very not like it's not like an auto include or anything. But I think this is a card you have to really keep your eye on when you're in a creature heavy deck um, in blue. Uh, and maybe even like a, like a Demir style deck or something like that that doesn't have good ways of dealing with enchantments and artifacts. Just three mana, instant speed, remove a bunch of permanents from the battlefield. It's just, it's, it's inherently powerful. It doesn't fit everywhere, but it's going to be really strong in certain decks. This card is, is huge. Uh, I, I think this card's amazing. I've, pretty much managed to like any now like any creature deck in blue it, it goes in there it's like i i think it's an auto include in there like why wouldn't you when it's... when it comes to creature decks like it's it sets you it's so beneficial to your game plan and it, it's so cheap it, it like every tempo deck i've played i love this card right because i get to continue to keep all my all my little creatures and it, it's three mana mm-hmm. i think this was like one of my most hyped cards coming out of of aftermath uh, I just am so, sweet. so confused. Re- Why? Okay, I, even I in you, the creature deck, your opponent keeps their creatures you, and just blocks. Why? I, I'm not understanding the logic three here. Let me give you three examples. I'll take one. One examples. good example, and I, I will be satisfied. Right. Two words. C monsters all right okay, you're I... in simic all right <laughs> oh, God. You're, uh-huh. you're ramping how are you ramping you're not with mana rocks not with treasures or any of that garbage no you're doing good old green land ramp and then you play your big old sea monsters on the battlefield and your opponents they're putting their signets on the battlefield they're trying to set up and all do their little cute little things maybe they drop a little propaganda to be like oh sea monsters please don't hit me you may have to pay some mana boom three mana you just set them back like two turns and you have sea monsters on the battlefield. Boom, punch them in the face. Same thing with like Simic Merfolk or uh, Min Wally Illusionist is another great example where it's very creature focused. I don't want to bounce my tokens. I want them to die. So bounce, bounce is bad. But yeah, I just set them all back multiple turns or so, you can so even your, your plan you is to bounce mana rocks is that what i've heard well, you here? bounce you bounce their treasures you bounce their mana rocks you bounce if they're enchantress you just bounce all their enchantments and I don't then they have to bounce another... enchantress i don't you, think you want to do that though they, it takes a, okay they oh they'll draw another card from their blah 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 thing but they're pinched on mana and setting them back an entire turn is is good i think or you could even storm off of it like if you're in like is it storm if you're like joyra for example a historic storm you bounce all your artifacts your artifact storm you okay, bounce all your see. like cheerios artifacts cheerios. okay yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot of it. Like, if, if the argument's cute. it's good as a combo piece i i could see that if you want to pick up all your zero mana rocks and like do that stuff I just don't. I, I, even in the like sea monster scenario, I'm just like, doesn't your opponent keep all their? So you're like, is the scenario like none of my opponents are playing creatures in their decks? I'm playing a creature deck, <laughs> and then in that like that pot, no, it's good. I'm my, like, my so creatures are wait, 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 wait. Are you are you just forgetting but, about also like rogues and and all the cheap like evasive creatures like okay. that I. Like, but what do you? Like, what do you care about their mana Still rocks, has all though. their creatures. Like, all you're doing because is bouncing their mana rocks. They still have their blockers, right? They still have all well, that. They're not. They're not blocking usually the decks that I'm playing with creatures, right? Because like, I they don't have the opportunity to. And sea so, monsters are eight eights. And, and, what are you and blocking? Then on top of that, like, you're you're blowing up their setup, right? You're blowing up all the stuff they're doing around the creatures. And I'm and I know that my creatures are low to the ground and evasive, so I don't care if they have creatures. I, I probably care if, example, like, I don't know. I'm not but, but you care that no they have mercy. a mana rock? I'm confused. I, yeah, well, yeah, a tempo deck. What do I want to do? I want to set you back all the plays tempo. that you've like, done, right? Set you back so you redeploy your pinched on mana and you do it again. This spell costs me probably way less than the amount of mana that I've bounced back and, like, disrupted. But if you play against another green deck, then you bounce nothing maybe like, i mean it's, if you're telling it's pretty me situational I get to, right if i get to like send back your ozolith or or your world tree and make you do it all over again on your turn that's fine with me i don't care right even if it's just a one mana spell the point here is you are still spending your turn to redeploy everything and i could do this at instant speed and that's three nuts three mana. for three mana don't wait but okay. don't you also have to redeploy all your stuff or is the, well, is the argument like i'm not i'm not playing any <laughs> mana rocks in my deck or any I, Honestly, heuristic studies so like most, or okay 
Huh. Most of my low to the ground creature decks don't get, like outside of like my sword and stuff like that. Like I'm not like too worried about what I'm bouncing back. And if you're in green, then you're not you're not mana <laughs> exactly. rocking Body it up. You know, have to redeploy. Like, and yet, sea monsters speed. don't care. It's instant speed. How is that not amazing? I mean, you know what else is instant speed? <laughs> Obscuring haze. <laughs> yeah, but this I actually, mean, yeah, this but actually like, literally removes <laughs> from this Wait, no, this, this and this doesn't deal with anything. This, this doesn't deal with anything. From the per- Balvin. Not permanently. It saves you for a turn. Oh, <laughs> it deals with the logic. Which my brain is melting. <laughs> oh, my brain. Really creatures are permanent. It's so good. Oh my god! I would never play no, this what? card outside of a combo it takes, piece. It takes a permanent on the battlefield and removes it from the battlefield. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like Cheerios. Cheerios is, Wait, are you not is reading good. This? Cheerios Return is good. All non-creature, non-land permanents. No. No. Most people don't have that many. Yeah. They have like maybe one that Dude, they what? care about. <laughs> I what thought y'all were thinking. It, I thought y'all were thinking it bounced creatures too, and then it made sense. But no, no. Yeah. Can you I'm imagine if you put warp devotion on the battlefield and then you run this? Oh, yo, I, yeah, uh, I, I, do I can. That actually. I can get behind the combo it plan. Warp devotion. Like if you're <laughs> trying to do some combo, I can get behind that. But just playing this for value, I, I can't. I can't see myself doing like, it. Like if you're if you're at a pod where everyone's playing Voltron, then this is gas, right? They attack, you filter out, and then you kill their commander. Let's, let's not, oh, let's this not makes my equipment this makes niche. my equipment deck so sad. Like if you if you cast this and I swing, like imagine I yeah. swing some some creatures and you you bounce all my equipment. Oh, yeah, but th- oh, this is I'm super sad. tech, right? Or like maybe Enchantress, no. like you you bounce all their enchantments, you kill their thing, and then you like alpha strike them. Mm-hmm. So I can see it about as, like, like, a very it, narrow tech card. <laughs> like, Enchantress is always narrow, like, oh, I'm going to draw a card whenever I cast an enchantment. But, like, if you're spending five mana for your privileged position and three mana for your ghostly prison, that still takes time to redeploy. I don't care that you drew five extra cards or, or can you kill them in that more. one turn? And if Probably. you could, like, could, would, would it better just to run like overrun or something and just finish them off with your one well, but if they have like but ghostly so prison weird. effects you can't overrun them you gotta remove this that's true the, the if you want to remove ghostly prison but you have cyclonic rift or i definitely will take this that. over yeah, a, a freaking seven a fog no for two I mana know, like, use it to remove propaganda fog. <laughs> okay 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 crib what do you have for us Okay, this is the most so controversial i i have a six mana card as i said a lot of the Surprisingly, although March of the Machines had, like, literally no effect on Standard, um, what it did have, and I don't mean, oh, yeah, because they always build for Commander. I think this set actually did a lot for Commander. And it's one of the Commander deck cards. It is uh, 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 Infernal Sovereign. It's four black, black, flying, trample, skip your draw step, and whenever you play a land or cast a spell, you draw a card and lose a life. So, I think this card is sweet. This is, like, yeah, I'm giving up my draw step, but how easy it is that I'm just going to play, like, I play a land, I draw a card. You know, I, I cast anything, I just, I lose a life, I draw a card. Like, this is just a really good six mana value engine. Like, for a while, we like, you know, you used to see, like, in black, like, what's the thing where non-token creatures dying, you draw a card, yada, yada, yada. This is just literally always going to Harvester have, of Souls? Yeah, Harvester of Souls. This is just going to do better, I think, every time, right? Like, those cards like that, like, this is just... A really good demon. And obviously I play it in my demons deck, so that's why I love this thing. And if I'm ever worried about getting Oppo agented out, then like hopefully I have removal for it, right? But like or not Oppo, uh Notion Thief. But the point here is that oftentimes this comes down and it just accrues a silly amount of value. Hmm. I mean, seems fine. What kind of decks do you play? Is this like a demon tribal card for you, Krem, or are you just jamming it in like generic uh, like I any deck? A- so I have it also, like, in my Kyrick deck, and then I have it in my Bellacore deck, and then I just have it as a really good black, like, threat that is also a value engine. It's a solid creature. Oh, it's busted it's in Kyrick. It, it's great in Kyrick, obviously, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, this this card just is a solid black mid-range threat that accrues value, and it, it, does, it doesn't do anything flashy. It's just good. I think this is a flat-out good card. What, like, what is the most amount of cards you can draw in black for six mana? That has a body and that rewards no, no, not you for a body. playing a Just land? Just like raw card draw. 
can do oh, well. Like, sure. You have, so like, yeah, Necropotence, you Necro like, okay, okay. I guess Necro. Okay, ignore I mean, Necro. You can draw your deck five mana, mana. Five mana draw right. fives, right? Peer like, into uh, the abyss or something. Power, peer into the abyss yeah, and draw power. half your deck yeah. for seven. Mm. But right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on team. If I'm... I, I'm on team, draw a lot of cards while also advancing the board. So I actually like this because if this was just like six mana, draw lots of cards, like that's great, but I don't want to die. Been having a six, six flying trample attached to it. I like, I like that a lot. Like I, I like pairing my card, my card advantage with a, a board state and that does that. So I do like it. Um, I like it mostly. You kind of die. You take a life for each card you draw. <laughs> Yeah, you're kind of yeah, dying. You like, really need yeah. lifelink. I think if you drop like sure. some sort of lifelink ability on it, like Raphael, Fiendish Savior, gives all your, with, your like demons you know, and you stuff with, lifelink. There's, there's no shortage of ways to like gain life. And not only that, you have Gary, you have all these things, right? Like, the, 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 this is just a very good creature. I think my concern with it is like, it's kind of bad right away, right? Like, assuming, uh, like so I guess six. if you have like 12 mana or something, but yeah, if you just play this on, if you play it on six, it can die without doing anything. Or worst case, like, if your opponents want to be really mean, they wait until you skip your draw and then kill it on your draw step, and then you actually just end up <laughs> down a card for playing it. Well, but what if you respond at that point? Because then you untap and you respond. Uh, I forget. Krim always card, has. Krim's right? always got draw an card. instant. Yeah, but what if you play that. Infernal Sovereign, and then they filter out all your mana rocks back, and then you can, like, storm <laughs> off and draw. <laughs> or is that but a filter out? This keeps getting better. But then they like, like, are you put this in filter out? <laughs> and it all falls apart but but obscuring haze they've you've gone up 15 cards by that time and they've prevented six damage it, the cards kinda, only bad uh, if it's like you're empty-handed right like if you you can't if you're empty-handed you can't cast this like well, but, wait, you have no, but whatever you draw wait, off the top not? will draw you a card right? oh wait, no you can't draw you don't get your cards. yeah you skip so your you're, you're, you're done you have a commander you have yeah. oh yeah you have a commander that, yeah, yeah, you can, yeah but then you have to yeah i feel like i feel that that green card. There's a green card where you stop drawing or something, but every Re- time you play recycle it, cycle or something. Recycle, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's also six mana. There's there's a few versions of this. There's like a black enchantment, no perfusion that's six mana, and you skip your draw step and you play a card, you draw a card, your max hand size is two. I think None of those yeah. come with bodies. I the like body, the fact yeah. That it's a six, six, yeah, the trample. flying six six trample body is not like this is again, it's not flashy, it's not doing anything new in the game of magic, but what it is is just efficient it is efficient and very just a solid well-rounded card i like it it's a it's an interesting choice i'm a little skeptical of creatures that don't do anything right away but i could see like if you get to untap with it and go off with it like it can certainly be super powerful like its ceiling is super high i feel like in a a like yeah in a 1v1 format i'm never playing this card right but like the, the thing is like in commander this is also like not something that where it's like oh my god everyone's oh, gonna kill you it, for it. I would. To- I think this isn't this like a why, huge why removal it? magnet. I, if <laughs> I saw you play this, I would think oh my god if I let you untap, you're gonna draw so many cards. I'm you're gonna pull super far ahead. I don't know if I try to kill we'll you, see. but I would. I would be very frightened of this card. I'd be frightened. So you of this would. Card you would too. have to. <laughs> yeah, which which means though the upside, like you had mentioned, the ceiling here is absurdly high. If you untap with this, it, you're gonna draw cards. It reminds me a little bit of like the black consecrated sphinx i think it's worse because you're really mm. likely to at least draw two cards with consecrated sphinx yeah but like it, it reminds me of that same threat level of like if we don't deal with this before it goes around the table the person with this card is gonna is gonna really pull away it feels like a weak consecrated sphinx that's for sure like yeah like consecrated sphinx once you do one turn cycle you don't have to cast anything you just if you make it one turn cycle you draw at least six cards right one for each opponent or two yeah. for each opponent for on their draw phase. And then if they draw any more cards, then you're like, oof, gravy town. Um, so it's like a weak Consecrated Sphinx, but is that bad? Like, a, I think Consecrated Sphinx, even in, in 2023, is like a fantastic card. And so, it has... And it's a dollar. It's and like it has some huge upside. Like, there yeah. are turns where you untap with this and cast five spells and draw five cards mm-hmm. and just, like, chain them together and, like, go off, so... If you're flooding mana rocks and lands, yeah. you're just like, okay, cool. I just replace those. That's like, it seems worth it, right? You spend mana, you get mana, and then you just keep firing off spells. All right. Mm -hmm. Next up, Seth, what do you have for us? 
Cool. So I was really tempted to put Mana Tithe in this slot because I really love Mana Tithe. And <laughs> no one expects it, which I think makes it kind <laughs> of a secret. But I, I think I have an even better white card to uh, to talk about in this slot instead, which is the restoration of Iganjo. Uh, restoration of Iganjo is one of the one of the sagas from Kamigawa Niai Dynasty, uh, kind of the, the white version of... Um, Reflections of Kiki Jiki. So it's a three mana saga. First lore counter, you search for a basic planes. Second one, you discard a card, and then you can reanimate a permanent with mana value two or less tapped. And then you flip it into a okay creature, a three four with vigilance that when it attacks or blocks, she makes a one one spirit. So I think the upside of this card is. Uh, so people played a little bit in Commander in like Saga decks or Enchantress decks, but I actually think this is just a really solid white ramp spell. Like if you think about what the first two lore counters on this do, the first one, it, it's ramp would suspend one essentially. The first one gets you the planes and then the floor is the next turn you discard that planes and put it on the battlefield. So you ramped yourself with a land. It's not even getting blown up by uh, by whatever, Vandal Blast or any of the Mana Rock style ramp. And then the upside is you could also be getting back your spirited companion or your soul rank something like that that died throughout the game and then the backside it's not a exciting creature a three four on like turn five or something isn't gonna like win a game of commander but it is a fine creature like it can attack and block it makes some one ones in in a game of commander you're never gonna complain about having a body on the battlefield so i actually think this is just like a really good white ramp spell with a, some flexibility and upside that you don't need to be an enchantment deck to play. I think you can jam this in in any deck and get the value out of it. I'm shocked that Seth uh, suggested this one because Seth, it says a basic planes. You don't run basics. How are you? How are you running this card? You're gonna I, fail, fail to find. I I might have two or three. I, I might ah. have two or three. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, what do you think, Richard? I'm always trying to sell you on these these ramp spells this that like put lands on the battlefield. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> I haven't played this that much in Commander, even though I play this so much in Standard and as ramp most of the time. It also has a lot of synergy with just random white reanimation, like Sun Titan, Savine's Reclamation. All those things can bring it back. So I actually really like... Like, it's basically unconditional ramp like it's not catch up ramp in that sense but you do need to you know get the the extra lore counter and you also need to not miss your land drop uh so yeah i actually really like it i think i'm gonna put it in all my decks and begrudgingly play that extra planes you know how many planes we need one should we just should we just risk it? Just hope I you mean, don't draw that one plane. In, in <laughs> mono play light. two planes as backup. No, you in can mono play a lot of you got plenty. <laughs> yeah, in mono white you got plenty of room. In a, like a four or five color deck, it would I might not play it unless Let, it was land a tax. Chantress, but land only tax causes you to play. <laughs> oh yeah, they actually. So you're good. Yeah, they synergize pretty well together. I I played a gladiator game with Vince on his YouTube a little while ago, and this card came up, and that got me thinking about like, wow, I really need to play this in Commander more often. Often. I'm not sure how good this is. Like, really? You don't like ramping? Commander? <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. He doesn't like, like ramp, it's, actually. <laughs> it's even, but like, it's not even good ramping, right? Like, it, like I, I may despise ramping, but like, I don't despise this. This doesn't hit me as a ramp, right? Like, well, we're not this, green, this, Krim. We, this is all we got. Right. <laughs> got to do it on hard mode. There is, there is <laughs> but so many like, better cards to ramp. Yeah, there, there's than like hoops here. Really? You gotta, you gotta really, okay. like... Give me 12. Like, <laughs> I mean, you, okay, well, obviously 12, specifically. No, I mean... See, but really, though, is it that bad? Like, is it... Okay, compared I, to, like, a three-mana mana rock, wouldn't this be a yeah. better source of ramp than a three-mana mana rock? Like, I guess the downside no. is... No. The downside no. is it's a turn slower. The upside is... Yeah. It's permanent, and it doesn't get farewelled and Vandal Blasted, and eventually you get a creature out of it. But it's not a turn slower. It's like two turns slower, right? Because it comes into play tapped, whatever mm. you're getting. Okay, that's okay. Right. I guess that's true. So yeah. it's yeah, it comes into play tapped. Oh boy, the so, they are reanimating. Okay, so yeah. let me let me sell you on some white ramp cards. So number one, Knight of the White Orchard, two mana. If you have less lands, you get any right. land, any planes. Yeah, so that works. And sometimes. it puts it on the battlefield untapped. Lore Warhound. It's a basic planes. It goes and play tapped. But it's also it also has a body. But those aren't uh, guaranteed. Okay, for three mana, Archaeomancer's map. It's three mana. 
ETB, switch your library for two basic land cards, put them into your hand. And then if any opponent plays a land and they have more lands than you, you get to put a planes from your hand onto the battlefield tap. No, wait, not planes, any land. Any land yep. from your hand onto the battlefield tap. So that's three. Smuggler's share, if they cast uh, two cards, you make a treasure. If they draw two cards, uh, you draw a card, I believe. That's that's the one. It was off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's four. Um, <laughs> you don't really get it. Give me 12. But the, I think the common thread is those are all like, well, maybe not smuggler's share, which I, I haven't really seen anyone play, but those are all catch-up spells like yes this when they work they're better but there's also like the downside case of like sometimes you know you don't have you're the least lands at the table or later in the game this does more than that does so there's there's this is more gnome terramancer deep gnome terramancer if they put a land onto the battlefield and they didn't play it you get to search your library for any planes not just a basic put onto battlefield tab that's not catch-up that's like if they crack a fetch or whatever boom you just get a planes if they but there's a chance up. that that also does nothing. That's still... Yeah. I think this is still the most consistent. Like, yes, it's a little slower, but it's also, but, like, or there's no condition. Or gets two basics like, and put it into your hand. Right, that's, yeah, not, that's not ramp, though. <laughs> but, Tomer, you should know. I, you, you, I, you're really indexing on getting that Lotus um, that Lotus Veil. No. Because once you do one catch-up ramp, you're done. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then all the rest of your catch-up ramp is is useless, so... Yes, those cards are better, but this is Commander. We I, play like 10 I, I ramp would, cards. I would just play right? so, a, a you mana know, rock. Ramp 7, Ooh. 8, 9. I think that's the question. I would play this over a mana rock. Assuming I'm a, <sighs> a white deck that has a lot of planes, I would play this over three mana mana rocks. I think the, the well, upside is enough to make it worth it for me. Why would I play that when I could just like play Staff of Completion, even mm. in a white deck? Which staff of completion is also? I know it hurts, but like it draws you cards, it proliferates, it can let you destroy your own permanent if needed, like, and it makes the mana at the cost because of two, it gets sure. farewelled, Krim. You're the very sure, old farewell like, you're about like, to cast. The farewell we yeah, never play. The farewell, the, the only I play it, apparently. Okay, Don't how about say this? We. It gets Y'all filtered know out, I play it. huh? It gets filtered <laughs> out. What are you gonna do? I mean, about oh, combo. <laughs> get filtered out. Combo. Both get filtered out. So that's all the same. But at least on the way out, you can draw a card. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You get, the, if you get filtered out with restoration, I mean, you get value too. You replay and get the planes sure. again, and so forth. Like I'd it's... play this honestly. I'd play this, but I'd only play it like in Enchantress and in... that doesn't count. Enchantress, yeah. you play any enchantment. <laughs> but you gotta play it in like a non enchantress deck. deck. I like that Ooh. it discards. So like Quintorius, we played against Quintorius recently, and like Quintorius wants discard outlets. So like that's an additional benefit. Well, it's deck. been getting more reanimation so, lately. It seems like Wizards yeah. has kind of like reintegrated that into White's part of the color pie more. So, like, so, that's an additional upside. I, I'm going to play it more. Y'all don't like have to. I'll I just beat you with it. <laughs> if there's if there's synergy in the deck with it, then I will run it. Otherwise, I probably won't. But I like it. it it's a good it's, reminder. I forgot about this card honestly. So, Seth, we got to have our own like, podcast. Man. I know we, we do. Just echo the, chamber the off Seth each and other. Richard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need the same let's, let's, page. Let's, 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 yeah, let's yeah. eyes and Joe mean? into yeah. a fog. What does this okay, mean? Let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. We'll ramp and then cast our free I fog. You, <laughs> I told you, Tomer. Yeah, and then you and Tomer can have your own podcast and we'll see whose is more popular. Let's uh, well, That'll uh-huh. determine who's right. Yeah, Who gets the most <laughs> no, views, the most are, upvotes. Are we really trying to compete with them? Like playing like legit black cards and then we're playing fog. So. Yeah. Yeah. Our fog stops at demon, podcast. Richard. It stops Swords at of yeah. is well, unplayable. We'll see how well that value. goes, Richard. <laughs> we know how well that goes. <sighs> all right. All right. I, I got a good one. I got a good one. I got, I got a good one. Viridian Revel. Um, That's so This old, is like dude. Scars. This is old. Yeah. Scars of Viridian. Yeah. Uh, one green, green enchantment. Whenever an artifact is put in an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, you may draw a card. So, you know, if someone is popping off with Dockside, uh, Smothering Ties, those treasures go to the graveyard before they disappear from from the battlefield. So you get to draw a card for every treasure cracked. And in 2023, everything makes treasures. Uh, you could also Viridian Revel and then just, uh, you know, destroy all artifacts. <laughs> And then draw cards like that. So green has a lot of good ways to draw cards, but I, I like Viridian Revel. I with the with the rise of like clues, treasures, 
uh, even like Mindstone, like things like that. Like you can get value off this quite easily. Plus just removal, like artifacts die sometimes. Like uh, yeah. I, I think this card is like pretty underrated. It keeps getting better. Like there's so many artifact tokens now between blood and treasures and all that. That the question is like, I always run into with these cards. Is it worth playing? Like, I don't know. Uh, uh, worth playing in a random pod because like you could run into matchups where it does nothing but then in the right matchups it's going to be really good what was that card do you remember tomer that got bought out it was like some very conditional green card draw spell that game knights talked about and it's like oh when a black permanent does something and then it got bought out and spike like (laughs) is that actually like similar which better i think it's compost well, if yeah, I can toot I, I my own horn, too. <laughs> if I can toot my own horn, I was big on insights, the blue enchantment that whenever a person casts a an opponent casts a green spell, you draw a card, and that got bowed out, and then people were like, "Oh, Tomer's price fixing and stuff." Yeah. Like I'm smart enough to buy cards. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I feel of, those are no good though. Like if if it's, like it's let's say I play an anti Grixis card and I know Crim is in my pod, don't you feel that's a little scummy? Whereas this is like no. more general, what? you know. What? Is, yeah. First off, that doesn't feel scummy. Second off, this is this is totally a chiller. This card's sweet when, like you had mentioned, because of it. it I think almost everything makes a treasure now. That's there true. Is some everything makes true. a treasure now. There, there's always something either that or like you had mentioned a blood token or some food token or some artifact token you know what i mean like there's just so much artifact in commander now even just passively in non-artifact decks right like i i think there's play to this i don't think that i there's i i actually feel like uh maybe three like eight like two out of like 10 games you may have it literally do nothing I mean, I guess you don't need that many cards for it to be good. Like, it's only three mana. So if you draw, what, right. two or three cards off of it, it's, like, okay. And anything more than that, it's, like, really good. That seems practical in a world of dock sides and treasures yeah. and clues and bloods and mana rocks. Like, worst case, you blow up a mana rock and draw a card. Would you jam right. this in just a, a generic deck then, Richard? Have you tried it much? Have you, like, just jammed I've it in a it. random green deck? I- so th- this is my coveted jewel where, like, I keep trying <laughs> this thing, but I never draw it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the same thing happened or, to, to coveted jewel where I played it for literally a whole season and never drew it. And then it finally <laughs> came out. So I- I'm waiting for Radiant Rebel. I'm convinced it is so, good because people play Mana Rocks. Like, even if true. you don't have, like, the treasure player, people play Mana Rocks. And my theory is Mana Rocks don't live past turn four. So if it's, like... Unless it's farewell, I'm getting value with my Viridian Rebel. So I'm all in on this. I, I think it's good, but I'm not sure. I've never, I've never actually <laughs> cast it in a game. I feel so bad because I'm like so anti most of these cards. What, what do you not like fine. about this one, Tober? You can be wrong, it's like, Tober. It's, the internet. <laughs> it's like insight and compost to me where like, yeah, you Whoa, can run man. it, and it's it, it, most of the time if you just jam it into a generic deck. Like sometimes it's going to be really good, sometimes it's not. I I think you guys are overestimating how many people are running treasures in every, every single deck. Because who's like, play, Are you not playing mana rocks though? Yeah, but what? And I, are we not sweeping mana rocks at some point? Apparently not, because nobody runs removal. <laughs> No, no, no spot removal. Fine. But you we need a them. mana rock fog. <laughs> but farewell, farewell, exile. So it wouldn't even trigger this. Yeah. So farewell does well. Farewell would remove this thing as well. But yeah. So aside from farewell, like you, uh, you could play the the green thing that kills all like, enchantments and artifacts. But like, okay, I, I think up. if you drew like three cards off, this would be good. But then the question is like, how many turns are you waiting to draw those cards? Like, okay, eventually the mana rocks are going to get destroyed. But if they're destroyed like four turns later. I don't know. It just doesn't seem very good to to wait that long. Like it feels like it has to spend draw like eight or something, which could be good, but like it's too situational. However, I, I will to to balance out the negative with the positive. <laughs> I will run it. it like almost... enchantress. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. Well, yes, that too. But like, yes, synergies. I, I'm always a big advocate for synergy. I don't like generic staples, and I don't really run generic staples, but. 
Let me paint a picture for you. Glunch, the bestower, everybody's favorite jellyfish, gives people treasures. If you're giving people treasures, they're going to use the treasures, right? Like, they're not going to have it sit around. So if you have ways of actually giving your opponents artifacts that will be sacrificed, Kibu is another one, the, the ape one, where the, it taps to make bananas, and you can sac- they're artifacts, and you can sacrifice the bananas for mana in in-game life. And it could also destroy those bananas too if they're not even sacrificing it. So it destroys artifacts. Like that's another one. Anything that gives my opponents treasures, anything that gives my opponents artifacts that can be sacrificed for value, I'm gonna run this and it's gonna be awesome. But like, yeah, let, but let, just, let, I'm, I'm not gonna paint, like jamming it random. I'm gonna paint an even cool, like a bigger picture yeah. for you. Yeah, because uh, we're all artists right now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in a deck: Jund or Teamer. Uh-huh. You play the Sardine Avenger. You play Pain Distributor. You play you play I'm these in. kind of cards. And what was it's the like Blood Tide longer... Harvester, the one that gives like blood tokens when you hit, hit yep. them? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, in Jun, you have the one where it's like the vampire. When they cast a spell, they get a you know a token. Yeah. Yada yada yeah. So the point here is you can build decks where you're you're giving them artifact tokens that they probably want to use, and they get punished for using it. And every turn they don't use it, they get punished for using it. So, because then you have the, like, what's the thing where it's like, there's something that, it's a red enchantment, it gives people, like, two treasures, and then it gives itself counters, and then for every counter on it, you everybody oh, takes that damage. The scent into yeah. Avernus or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah I the love the scent into Avernus. So you, now you're building this teamer or this jun, Jund. like, here, have something on the house. Use it, it's going to hurt you. Don't use it, it's going to hurt you. So, like, See, me and Kurt are on Sardine the same page this entire podcast. Yeah. What, what you're describing on? is a D card. Yeah. Where you build a very specific niche combo and it pops off, but otherwise it's complete garbage. <laughs> so that's what you're saying. I don't know, man. It sounds pretty cool <laughs> no, to like, me. Sometimes you're going to run into a Prosper deck and you're like, going to be feeling really good about yourself, but I feel like it's not going to happen often enough to justify unless you're you're building around. <sighs> I'm I, I'm not all the way with Richard on this one, but I'm I'm closer to Richard's argument, I think, than No, no, our podcast is falling apart, Seth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Tober, what you Tober have and bond right, have only strengthened. So there's a card <laughs> fade away. Their podcast right? is winning. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's bring him back. Okay, okay. So there's one card that I have talked about many times before that I'm not, I'm just gonna set the stage with it. Bolt bend, four mana, but it costs one it costs uh one mana if you have a power a creature power four. Or greater and it can just redirect uh, a spell or ability um, and I think this card is really good you guys poo pooed it in the past so I'm already prepping you for a card that <laughs> I don't think you'll like but I think the viewers will like because the viewers are got my back on this one so very similar vein to it is Will's Reversal it's a three mana red instant that says choose target spell or ability with one or more targets uh, you roll a d20 and you add the greatest power among creatures you control between one and 14 you choose new targets for that spell or ability and you pay 15 plus and you get to copy that. You get to redirect and you get to copy it and choose new targets for it. So this card, much like Bolt Bend, um, is a way to uh, basically turn stuff that's aimed at your stuff, usually your removal, and, and aim it at other people for a nice two for one. This is basically like a three for one. Like your opponents are aiming something at you and you're like, nah, I'm going to blow up that instead and something else. Good times uh, all around so it's protection and it's redirection so it's it's a good value three man is a lot but uh you get to double a spell which is usually more than more than just that it's like a four man is like wild re- ricochet this is three man instead <laughs> you gotta roll 15 to- Tomer's, plus to Tomer's out. <laughs> so you, you roll a 15 plus but if you're in a go tall deck like if you're in a voltron deck if you're in like a like any sort of like big stompy deck and you're regularly running around with eight eights or whatever then this is going to be really easy to hit 15 plus. Like, that's the whole point for it. Um, so, like, I recently put it in Ob Nixilis, uh, Captive Kingpin. Obby gets, like, 12-12 really quick, like, super fast. It's, it, the number one thing you have to do is protect Mr. Obby because Obby is basically the reason why the deck is so good. It all revolves around your commanders sticking around. So you want protection. This offers protection, and it doubles the value. It's just, it's, just, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> See, it, <laughs> I like uh, synergies. It seems good in a dice rolling deck. Uh, I would play it in oh a, no. dice, a dice rolling deck. <laughs> what about if you have like a 12, if, you, if your deck I, regularly makes 12 12s or something? I'm actually curious, like, 
what do you guys think of this archetype of card? Like, I think Will's Reversal, like Tomer's right? made some good some good points about it. Like, I like that it can redirect multiple targets. That's pretty cool. I like that it's cheaper than some of the other versions. For some reason, I just never played spell reversal style cards, though. Like, no matter how good they are, I just never... Even the, like, deflecting, deflecting swat, swat I don't really play. Like, you don't deflecting play deflecting swat? swat? Is, so, so you go, like, deflecting swat, and then you work your way yeah. down, right? It, so, so this is probably and, the next tier, that, right? Yes. Yeah, like, I would say this is right... Uh, like, this is my question to you, then, Tomer. So, I put deflecting swat at the top, right? And yeah. then, right underneath that, is that this, or is this, or is it bolt bend? I would go deflecting swat, bolt bend, will's reversal. So, you, so do you think, outside of, like, some weird NBA-themed deck where you're trying to swat everybody all day long, <laughs> like, like, how many of these oh, effects... No. Are you yeah? Like how many of these effects are you trying to do? But if you do the, if you got to do the no after, yeah, the finger wag, no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but but like, how many of these can you honestly put into a deck? Do you think three? I run these three. So wow, three is that is that not okay. a lot? Like I, I I would argue that maybe sure bolt Ben costing one, but this being able to add the greatest power among creatures you control is kind of nice, potentially giving you a copy. So. I see a deck like a deck maybe like maybe running one, but there's no way you can go above two. So is this to you better than Bolt Ben? No. Because it's three mana versus one. But right. I think so- there's certain decks that want all three of them. Like my Perforous deck, for example, I started adding Will's Reversal sure. and I just freaking sure. love it. Um, is a it's a sneak attack deck and it usually has like a six something power creature on the battlefield. Um, yeah. and that's, that, that it's starting to, it works with, like, I already have deflecting swat. I already have both Ben. And I was like, what else? I'm loving these effects. And then this came around and I'm like, get, let me give it a shot. It looks pretty terrible. You have to get a 15 higher. That's crazy. But then if you have an, if you have a deck that just regularly has like eight eights on the battlefield, it's really easy to hit it. And that's I, where I, it's good. I, I agree with that. Like, right. Like where it's like, yeah, it's pretty easy to hit it there. If you're playing like a perforos deck and you're dropping big bodies, but I think I value the one mana of deflecting SWAT. A zero mana for higher. deflecting SWAT. Zero mana. Or I mean, not deflecting SWAT, uh, Bolt Bin. Yeah. The one oh. mana for the deflecting SWAT. A little bit higher. And maybe that's because I don't think you can be jamming that many SWAT effects. That's fair. Because let's just say that you're playing Boros, then at that point of a SWAT effect, when I play God's Willing, right? Like, I, I'd rather, I don't know, like, or an indestructible mm-hmm. effect. Like, because there's a mixture of redirects. And things that phase out and, you know, all of that indestructibles that you'll need. So, like, I don't know how many of these you can actually run. I think three is way too many. I think it's worth pointing out, too. Deflecting spots like 60 bucks. So, some people, this sure. might be number sure. two just because that might be out of the budget. It's 50 cents. And then- and then I could I see. Mean, this, I like the budget as a budget replacement for deflecting SWAT. I can kind of, yeah. I can kind of get behind that aspect. How yeah, many of these do sure. you play, Richard? Like, because I play zero. zero. Should I be playing I more? Mean, zero. No, no man, we're the same podcast. No, I'm sleeping on zero. <laughs> I, uh, I don't even know if I have a commander that has four or more power, or you're like even like regularly gets buffed, like by equipment deck, for example. It, there's, it's so good. I don't understand. So if, I, if, if I wanted to but protect, I, I would protect with something it? hardier, like indestructible and hexproof, because yeah, it doesn't help you against sweepers. And the right. two for one is fake because, like, you you really need to line up such that there is a threat you want to remove on the battlefield, and then your opponent decides to remove your threat rather than that other threat, and then you like deflecting swat it and like get a two for one. Usually, mm. you're going to deflecting swat something to protect and then just, like, kill some random stuff you didn't care about. Uh, so, I'd rather just play, like, some hardier protection if I care about protecting my commander rather than, like, trying to set up this this two-for-one. And deflecting swat is zero mana. Like, that, that is also key. Mm-hmm. There's no... And that's huge. Outside of white, there's no zero mana, like, protection spell, right? So, that one is good. I'll give that one a pass, but I, I don't see... The three for one potential, like I, I don't know about that, right? Like, okay, now I'll, I'll pick off like your random birds of paradise over there and the skull winder <laughs> left over. Oh so god! Oh yeah, I agree. I guess you I agree, could like, like shift a cruel ultimatum, and that's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah that would be sweet. There, there, yep. It is a huge, huge playmaker, and sometimes you can just like copy your own target removal spell too, right? Like you can just 
pay three extra, roll to die. Yeah. If you have big big enough creatures, obviously, like Obby. But you yeah, I, I agree. Two I'll... two might be too much. Three is is or sorry, two might be the cap. But I I'm firm believer of deflecting saw and bullpen. Bullpen, so good. Yeah, I'm gonna so this, this, I'm gonna so try I would bring up while or Will's reversal as a budget replacement. Yeah. to deflecting swat that I can yeah. get down with for sure. Also, bullpen stops counter magic or is your is your counter magic too? Like something like that. I Will mean, reversal is worse at that. It's it still does that. it though, right? Like it's it three, it's like it's a cancel, it. but it's a lot of mana. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna try one of these redirect spells when we kick off the new season of Commander Clash and just next time I play uh-huh. a red deck, remind me. I wanna I just want to get a feel for it because I never play them. Maybe they're better than I think. Maybe I'm switching podcasts. <laughs> dropping, oh, dropping. No, it's back to me, crazy bird person. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right Chris, God, join my podcast what do you have for us uh well i i know are you gonna join me on this because i've casted this numerous times i've played with all the cards that i've mentioned today and this card mm-hmm. you've seen it in standard it's currently popular now it's breach the multiverse and uh it's seven it's five black black each player mills 10 cards for each player choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's yard then put the cards onto the battlefield under your control, then each creature you control becomes a Phyrexian in addition to its other type. Doesn't exile itself, by the way. This card, look, say what you will about milling your opponents and helping their graveyard, (laughs) but let me tell you something. Sword of Body and Mind? (laughs) Woo! (laughs) That card cooks, dude, with this. Oh, the stonks. this this is this card is okay. Obviously, Body and Mind means that you're like getting, like you're getting good stuff, but like just this on its own, it's so good. Like, this card is so good in Commander. It is, an, like, every time I've cast it so far, it has just been an absolute house getting you value. So, I, I and, like, if the yard's empty, doesn't matter. This fills the yard, right? So, this card, I think now, I, I think this is good enough to almost move into, like, a, I, I obviously don't want to promote anything as a solid staple, like, a staple, but this is, like, pretty close to being a, a staply black spell. This is very good. It reminds me of the Black, Black primordial. primordial. Like it's yeah. it's, primordial. it's probably like a probably better, I guess, because your the creature is probably better them. than a five four in this mills in case the graveyard's empty. So it reminds me of like an upgraded version of that. Like I think it's I think it's yeah. good ish. Like if you're looking for a, a finisher in your black deck, I think it's a fine option. It's so solid. Yeah. I mean, standard. I played enough standard to be very scared of this card. So I, yeah. there's no, I can't say the card's and like bad or unplayable because I just like, died uh, to it so when many he times. Cast it off a tally. Like, oh, yeah. You also oh need my God. To, like, and, like, the one thing that confuses most people is that they assume that it's ha- it has to be uh, something you can get milled off of the 10. No, you mill 10 and then you yep. scan the yard. And get so anything. it is it is so good. Ooh, imagine hitting the primordial off of this and running it back. The fun mm, never ends. Mm, the fun yeah. never ends. <laughs> I think the challenge is like in Commander, reanimation is just so efficient. So I think that's like, if I think of it as a reanimation spell, it looks pretty bad because you have reanimate and animate dead and dance of the dead. But if I think of this as like a thing. finisher, then I that's where I kind of like, end up liking this card if i don't think of it as like oh i'm trying to reanimate my one big thing in a reanimation deck and i'm just like i'm just playing a black devotion deck and i'm ramping and doing that kind of stuff and i just like cast this for value as a finisher in a non-reanimation deck then i think it's actually like a pretty good card right just a fine finisher for any black deck wait why wouldn't you want the even in your reanimator deck this is like well, you I mean, would get to animate dead four times right like and I- then yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. It's just, like, the play pattern is a lot different than, like, in Tomb, try to reanimate my big thing on turn right. two or turn three. Like, yeah. uh, it's sure. a very different style of reanimation. You can certainly still jam maker. it in the deck. I just think of it as kind of, like, a different class of reanimation spell compared to, like, the the super early fast reanimation plan. Outside of some serious unlucky is, like, like yeah, like, where you don't hit anything. I just feel like this is just so good at feeling like, the plan itself, and you will find something. It will make something happen. Ten cards enough that you should you should be hitting something from everyone's deck. Unless you just get a really unlucky matchup-wise, but that's, that's pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> what you, I, I have an answer? announcement. I, I will not be joining Crim's podcast. Ooh, you don't uh, like it? Uh, you don't think this card's good? 
Okay, it's good, but it's interchangeable with like a lot of seven mana finishers. So like, yes, it That's fair. is good and it will close the game, but like, so do a lot of other like seven mana spells. So, eh. like, it uh... just reminds me of 2023 Primordial. Like we used to all play Primordial back in the day. Uh, now it's been power crept. So like, here's the updated version of it. And you can put it in your deck or you can replace it with another seven drop finisher. Like it's not too big of a difference. Um, I don't, but I don't know, man. The, the the primordials like this. The fact that it mills the ten and forces something out of your opponent's deck is really nice. Look, the primordial still slaps. By the way, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't like sure. this. It's a good respect. card. I'm saying it's a good card, but there's like lots of good card. Like, how many seven drops can you run in your deck? Like, and it's. I think it's interchangeable with like other seven drops. Like, there are other things that'll just end the game as well. So I think yeah. this does its job as a finisher. And if you have sort of body mind, it's hilarious. Uh, so. <laughs> my oh, question, yeah, my question for you, Krim, though, is how do you compare that to um, the big grand grandmama of granddaddy of of mass reanimation, and that's Rise of the Dark Realms. It's nine mana instead of seven, so two more mana. So where you put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. So how this works is that it's nice too that you can a hit Planeswalkers, which you may not think is relevant, but you, I've actually nabbed more Planeswalkers than I should with this. And then on top of that, so Rise of the Rise of the Dark Realms, again, two more mana. It's nine, which is all the world's difference, especially as someone who gets stuck all the time on lands. And, uh, and then on top of that, the fact that Rise of the Dark Realms does require there to be a yard. This forces milling into the yard. So I the, the difference here is it's two mana cheaper, and that it also forces the mill, so empty yards won't stay empty. So that on its own already is solid enough. I, like when you think about everything that this card does, uh, um, uh, glimpse the unthinkable. That's two mana, right? Then you then you play, let's just say, an animate dead, but without the minus one, right? So you that's that's four mana of spells. But now you copy that four times around the table, right? And then so you've already gotten a silly amount of mana's worth. Then you throw in the fact that. You know, like, yeah, like, the decks, maybe maybe it's a good thing that you milled yourself on this one, right? Maybe you can take advantage of the fact that you just self-milled here. So, <laughs> like, there's a lot to this. Like, there, it does a lot of things that, that I want it to do. So that's why I like it. It's cheaper, and it it actually hit, makes stuff hit the graveyard. Yeah, better Kermit targets. Wear. Yeah. Kermit to wear that so carefully because of sort of body and mind. I was like, well, maybe yeah, in what? this case, mailing <laughs> yourself is a good thing. I mean, that's why it's on the thing. Yeah. I mean, but like also sort of body and mind, and this is a combo, baby. That's a combo. That's right. Not a synergy, a combo. If, I like this card. Uh, yeah. I, I think the the milling is actually really important, but also I will only run it in synergy decks because I'm that. Yeah, person I, again. I'll only run it if I rex you. Tribal team. <laughs> no, no, but I'm thinking like Jaleva, or you can cast instant sorcerers for like if you can cast if you have a deck. To okay, cast if you can cast for free. For free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, an, it's, it's very good. Yeah. Itsugu and Kyrie or something like it's, it's yeah it's, it's, yeah. It's, oh lord, yeah yeah. You want those big big sorcery haymakers? I like it. All right, Seth, what do you have for us? Well, I got a even better black finisher for you. One of my one of my favorite cards. <laughs> Although this card's a little a little expensive, forty bucks, silly uh, silly reserve list. But uh, that card is hatred, and sometimes in a game of commander, someone's just got to die, and hatred is really good at making that happen. It's a five mana instant. You can pay X life and give target creature plus X plus zero until end of turn. We saw this a few times the last season of Commander Clash when I was on there, where this From card set. just takes someone out. It just straight up kills someone. And uh, often in a game of Commander, you have a you have a fill. Someone like that who's like, is going value town and becomes the arch enemy and has all the mana and we're like, we gotta stop them. And player removal mm -hmm. is a really, a really efficient way of actually ending that threat. So I really like Hatred. I don't think you have to necessarily be built around it. If you're aware that it's in your deck, uh, it's a pretty easy way to take one player out of the game. There is risk to it uh, if you're not careful because you do have to spend a lot of life potentially and you can lose on the backswing. Uh, so it is a risky way to take someone out of the game. But 
it's one of the most powerful pump spells that we've ever seen in Magic, and uh, I think it deserves a little bit more love. EDH Rec has a literal 0% of decks. People just straight up do not play this card, period. So I think Hatred should be played more often, and I don't think you really have to go that deep building around it to make it work. It's sick. It's literally, I, I would say this is the closest, one of the closest, if not top three, of literal player removal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a removal spell for a player. Like yeah. <laughs> You can even use it on someone else's creature. We've seen that on Commander Clash. Yeah. It's not just target yeah. your creature. You can wait until Richard attacks Krim and then cast it on Richard's creature or whatever. Like, yeah. It's a really cool card. Uh, I love this card. I don't think I've Cards ever been salty seeing it. <laughs> no, no. I like I've it. i only played but... in life loss decks with lifelink creatures that you can cast sorceries it for free. Look, if I can play, if I can play it on a lifelink creature like Carrick, like that's freaking amazing. Uh, Ramsey's yeah. assassin. Like I'm looking at the top commanders on EDH mm -hmm. Rec, and they all make sense. Like Ramsey's assassin lord. You attack with an assassin. You one shot somebody, and then it just says, "Oh well, if you one shot somebody with an assassin, you win the game." So that's just. Straight up kills everybody. Kedis, Emberclaw, familiar. Whenever you deal damage to an opponent, you deal that much damage to each other opponent. So you just take out everybody at the same time. Works really well with Infect. Works really well with like life swap decks. Works very well with Life Link. I, I don't even think you got to do that though. I think you can just be like, pull up the list of like most popular <laughs> black commanders and just like toss it in there, and it's gonna be sweet. That's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like, yeah, it's better if you have Life Link or you have Infect. Yeah. Like that powers it up even more, but. I would just, I would throw it in name a black commander, Carrick Braids, Marinar, whatever. Like, sometimes you just gotta make someone die. The game has to end. The game must end <laughs> sometime, can, and hatred go does to it. The combat step, <laughs> is this I think this, this card is in it. I think this card is really good. If it weren't for like the $50, $40 price tag. Yeah, that's, also, that's the killer. The silly reserve list. I think it would be more popular yeah. if it wasn't. Richard, yeah. are we still in the podcast? Where are you at with hatred? <laughs> We're back in the podcast, Seth. Yeah! It's back on. I, okay. I actually really like it. A, a similar card that I always try to make work is Berserk as well. That's the thing that like doubles the damage something Berserk. does and destroys it in a combat. And you can Berserk other people's creatures. This like, one, I, yeah. I, I, I like these like surprise pump effects that, like again, because in general, pump effects are considered bad. Like you don't really play like giant growths uh, mm -hmm. in Commander. But this, like these cards, can just like one shot people uh, at the cost these of life. Pump obviously, effects. it's this a pump effect. Pump effect. No, a pump. it's a gotcha card. I call <laughs> it a gotcha <laughs> card. Yeah, yeah, like, I, like an I really like them. agent, a notion thief. This, these are gotcha cards. And, and the fact that you don't need a creature is what's super sweet, right? Because you, you think, like maybe like me and Tomer have a feud. And then I pass a turn and it's Seth's turn and Tomer's like at ease because like Richard's turn is over, <laughs> right? And then Seth attacks Tomer and then we hatred him, right? Like it, it, it has that like surprise factor it does. that I really like. And like there's lots of ways to do it. Like someone has a flyer, someone has a menace creature or whatever. But uh, Spirited Companion comes rumbling in and no one's going to block <laughs> it, right? Yes. So I, I, I like hatred. I, I, I think this card is so, so sweet. Like, yeah, definitely get into Like, I literally had a hatred kill this past week because of just how fun it is in my Bellacore deck. Because yeah. it's a life swap deck, so I paid all my life, killed one person, and repaid in kind. Yes. <laughs> and that's See? how I, I would run it. Like, I don't know. I think you guys are downplaying a little bit the, the cost, the life cost. Hey, this because I, it's a five think... mana. Most it's of the times I fun spell. most of the times I cast it, someone else dies yeah. and then I die, and I still yeah. love yeah. it. <laughs> totally yeah, worth no, it. No, I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying I wouldn't run it in most decks just for the the heck of it for yeah. funsies. But like, it's five mana, so you need to you need to spend at least like ten life on this for it to be like. Why are you running a five mana spell at that point for a pump effect? Um, and you're gonna go down very low on life. So you need oh, to have yes, some sort of follow up that like if you just take out one person, you're not just like dead on the backswing because you're like literally killing yourself on the for the backswing. So I mean, like you, you could, gotta you yeah, could go something. down twenty life, like half your and, life to kill a player with like commander damage. Sure, so, but, that's but if, not if that's not horrendous. If that wasn't the last person at the table, you're probably dead on on whenever the other people untap and, well, and you can, say you thank can you for your too, service. Right? You're like Phil looks scary. Let's yeah. commander damage him out. You guys need me alone for four turns oh. <laughs> because I'm gonna pay half my life. And people will probably take that deal if Phil is that scary, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm you can't like politic your like, way a bit. 
I'm more like Kramer, where I'm going to use it, and then I'm going to set up my repay and Kai, and then I'm going to win the game. <laughs> I actually have a question about Berserk. Why don't people play Berserk? I'm just like, I looked it up on the it. Isn't it? it? Well, no, it's actually not. It was reprinting Conspiracy. It's it's still oh. like 20 bucks, but isn't oh, that just right like the right green right swords to plowshares? Like, this, isn't it just gas. one mana destroy well, any creature? Well, if someone's creature? attacking you, it's not a swords to plowshares. It's well, like yeah, I guess. damage, but if, I guess I guess if it's attacking someone else, it's fine. It's like and a, it doesn't even have to be attacking one, like, necessarily. Like yeah. you could cast it on a creature that's not attacking as long as it's during the before combat step. I think it's it gr- it's green swords. Stompy decks. It's green swords. I, uh, well, don't don't put it like that, Seth, because I won't play it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <say that. laughs> sorry, co-host. It, it, it's the green hatred, <laughs> Seth. It's the green hatred. Okay, the green hatred. Yeah. Yes, the green <laughs> hatred. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, next up. I, I got to go. Krim, you'll like this one, okay? I got Route. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going yeah. back to, like, I don't know what this it's is. It's been Odyssey a minute. Or something. It's a long time. Three yeah, white, it white. Conspiracy. Sorcery. You may play Route anytime you can play an instant if you pay two more to play it. And then it's Wrath of God. <laughs> Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. So five mana Wrath of God or seven mana instant speed Wrath of God. Who who expects the instant speed wrath out of white? Who sees it coming? Honestly, this card has has been so far out of people's minds that I honestly don't think people think about it as much anymore. I I like it. I I think instant speed is a huge upside. Like that is a really really big upside. We see that with um even with a uh, cyclonic rift, just being able to bounce all your opponent's stuff before your turn, you can kind of do something similar with this where you cast it and then you get to untap and rebuild your board first before everyone else. I, uh, the challenge I have is there's so many rats now. Like that's the, that's the challenge. There's just so much competition. And I think that's why I don't play it as much, but what do you think Richard is being instant enough of an upside to beat out like, Cheaper RAS, more flexible farewells, austere commands. Like, how do you rank this uh, in the hierarchy of RAS? How big of a deal is being an instant? So I slot it in sometimes, right? So there, there are obviously better RATs like uh, Our Revelation, Undo Inversion, Austere Command, etc. But depending on what deck I'm playing, like the, the instant speed factor is huge because you can choose to either not Wrath or Wrath end of turn. So if, when you're at the end of turn, like no one can deploy, like you're the first one to deploy back onto the board and like you don't miss like sweeping something that you, you cared about. So I, I think the two mana is worth it. And in the worst case, right, it's like five mana wrath. Like it's only one more than like the the normal rate, even though white can get away with like three mana wraths. Uh, so I, I think it's worth it. Oh yeah, Vanquish. Yeah, support. that's true. I mean, yeah, there's really not other options. I think... Faded Retribution might be the only other instant speed wrath, and that one's always seven mana, so you don't get the flexibility there. So I guess if you want an instant speed wrath, this is the way to go. I'm I might have to try it. I might have to try it again and see. Are there any specific decks, Richard, that you really like the instant speed in? Or is it just kind of random? Oh. I mean when I yeah. when I need rats like five to eight, <laughs> like this, <laughs> this is where I start picking into, one, yeah. <laughs> into route, right? Like when I get to the utility. Like, I put in the same tier as, like, Vanquish the Horde, and, um, like, once, once I get through my universal wipes that, like, can deal artifacts, creature, uh, artifacts, enchantments, and whatnot, this uh, is and I'm next... just dealing with creature-only rats, this is where Route is uh, a consideration. Hmm. Um, and I, I, I haven't cast it on Clash, but I play it a lot also. It's one of my tech cards that I, like, I keep trying to get you guys with, but, like... <laughs> You're like, etherize? Like, no, round nope. out of here, right? But <laughs> I haven't right. been able to do it yet. I haven't been able to do it yet. I'm, I'm on the fence, so I want to hear Crim's take. Because this is a draw-go board wet. So, so this is this is Crim's domain. I want to know if he gets a seal of approval or not. Because I'm very, I... like, iffy on this card. <laughs> See, so I like it. I like it because it's seven mana. I mean, because it's five. It's, 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 I like it. Because it's, it's, hold on, hold on. Re- wait, re- re- wait. Wait. I, I like it because it has the instant speed for seven mana. Yeah. But the problem I do often run into it is a lot of what I have an issue with in the current year, and is that indestructible is literally attached to everything. Everything passively gets indestructible now. 
So, and I feel like it. I almost, when I sweep the board, I want to exile or play something like Vanquish the Horde, which has a extremely cheap cost. So, this is actually kind of tough. I, I like this card because the option of it being instant is there. I right, really Chris, like Chris, I got that. you. you. You vanquish the horde, and they're like the fairies pro, and you're like, surprise. <laughs> got the stack again. route. Yeah. This, <laughs> yes. In response, it's a fairies pro route. <laughs> I mean, like, you know I like my instant speed board wipes. I've already told you I like Force of Despair, right? And this... Force of Despair is gas. This Force of Despair is that gas. That should have been part of... Oh, I should have been on my list. <laughs> you guys need to do a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, and you're that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not> like... <laughs> Route is still seven mana to... Like, would you play... What's the old Theros one? The Faded Retribution? Is that the one that's from Theros? And it's like yeah, four yeah, triple yeah. white? It's the one that... I, it's same I, it mana It is Faded cost. Retribution. Although, like, I think the flexibility... The flexibility... The flexibility is huge. That makes route better, right? right? The fact that it can be yeah, five, five mana or seven, kind of, kind of like Cyclonic Rift or whatever. You got the got the but optionality. Then, but then at that point, it being five, it's just strictly a worse board wipe than anything else you're trying to board wipe with, right? So like, the only reason you're casting this is because of the instant speed. And the only like reason you're putting right? it in like your the, the only reason in your deck is because it's instant speed. But right. there's going to be times where you cast it for five mana happily. Yeah. I think. I guess so. Yeah. It's like it. Uh, this is a tough read actually because I I do I do like it. I just <laughs> don't know if it still holds up. Wait, don't you play like ten wraths? What? Are, I'm so confused. How does this not make like slot number nine at least or something? What is? What are the ten ahead of it? <laughs> so you have you have farewell. Yeah. Okay. You have sunfall now. Ready. Yep, Vanquish uh, like, Horde. And then you've got uh, you've got of course like at that point you have austere command. Austere so you have command. Vanquish the horde. Rap right. Again. And then it, depending like it, it starts shifting from there. Well, okay, onto inversion because best MDFC. Okay. Yep. And then it starts True. shifting there depending on the board type, uh, board wipes type with the deck type. Right. Do I want to be a little more creature friendly? Am I looking to target only your stuff? So then we start moving into settle the wreckage. All these other things, right? So, like, which is instant speed as well. So, so would this be so, in that group then? The like, depending on the deck group, is that where you'd put it I for you? I don't know if it makes that cut anymore. See, I want oh, to. No. This is oh. this is this is where oh. it's it's good, but like, it's starting to edge into number eleven of the ten board wipes, right? <laughs> wow, because. I mean, like, w- there's just so much more that I could be doing, like, between like. I, I want to be exiling and maybe winds of abandon at that point, right? We start looking at that for six mana and I get a hard exile, right? Uh, like I, it's starting to move its way out. I can maybe see it somewhere oh, in the Crib, 10 It's 2023. Sweepers. Everyone phases out now. So all your board yeah. wipes are irrelevant. It doesn't matter if you exile <laughs> or destroy. We're phasing out. I don't know. But like if, if, but if I have a sweeper go off, right, I want it to exile. I don't want you to ever get it back. That's the thing. So I'm so on the fence. I I, I I think I I think I'm with Krim on this one that it's just like <laughs> it would have been good like ten years ago, but like there's so yeah, many better so many options. <laughs> like I like that yeah. it isn't speed. It's very unique, but like I don't know what deck would actually run it in. I don't know. <laughs> I, I got you, Richard. Matter. I got you. I like it. <laughs> I, I like it. We're we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe it's we we can't unite the podcast. It's not <laughs> happening. Oh, right. These oh, these last two rift. maybe. Oh wait, 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 one sec, one sec. I need something for this. Nah. Ah! Oh, and I ruined it. <laughs> what wait. are you doing? Wait, Tomer's. I think I know what he's doing. Did you add a Did he add a card just so we could flex on his like secret layer fancy uh, version or no, something? No, no, no. It, it it is really cool though. It's right. one of the so my card rarely printed in this so language. My favorite card in Magic that I own. Is uh, Hebrew Glory. I don't know yep. if it'll be seen in yep. the in the webcam, but it's very cool. It's the only Hebrew card uh, they ever printed, and I've had this in my collection the entire time. And every single time, I'm like, mm, maybe I should put it in a deck. And every single time, I'm like, nah, it looks too clunky and everything. So I'm going to read the card out, and then I'm going to tell you why I changed my mind. Um, so Glory is a five mana, uh, five mana three three flying creature. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because it's part of the cycle of like anger and filth and wonder and stuff that we're in there. And then the, when they're in the graveyard, they do something cool. In this case, you pay two and a white. So three mana total. You choose a color and creatures in control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. Activate only when glory is in your graveyard. So 
on the battlefield, it's just a 3 3 flyer for five mana. It's garbage. You want to be able to either sacrifice it immediately or, or ideally put it just directly into the graveyard, either by entombing it or by, or by discarding it. Once it's in the graveyard, then at any anytime you want, you can just pay three mana. Your stuff has protection for from a chosen color. Three mana is a lot. Like wonder is just like all your creatures fly all the time. Uh, anger is just like all your stuff has haste all the time. Wonderful. This one though requires three mana, and I'm like, oh, three mana. When am I ever going to do it? I started putting it in decks. Okay, and it actually has been performing quite well. Uh, because for three mana, you basically, if you have three mana up, if you're more of a Drago style deck and you have three mana available to you for three mana, if somebody's going to swords your, your, your thing, boom, your stuff has protection from white. You're fine. Or if you're playing red, it, this is why I ran it. I put it in my Boros deck. If you're running like Bass Effect or, or, uh, Blast Effect is the best one. But if you're like doing mass red removal, red damage removal, you can give your stuff protection from red and then boom, you have protected from your own red board wipe. So chain reaction and blast attack. In my case, that's what I was using it with. Um, and then the other way that you can use it in a cool way is it also makes your defenders uh, not die to combat, but more importantly, it gets around potential blockers. So this is a great way of like sneakily giving your creatures pseudo evasion. If you're up against like a Simic deck or something and they just have some green blockers on the battlefield, boom, protection from green, you get around them. So it has a lot of flexibility for it. Is it good in every deck? Absolutely not. I would not put it as like a like a normal like any anything. But if you're in a deck like uh, that has a lot of a discard theme to it, then I think this card is actually good enough to start running. Like it's not quite like the anger level of like oh my god I need to put it in every single creature deck or everything. But this card I start putting it just because I like the the promo and it slaps. But I also have to remind people, like, hey, I have the glory in my grave. I don't want to gotcha people too much, you know, because it's, like, uh, unknown information. But, like, I always say, like, hey, I'm discarding glory. You guys don't know what this card is. I have, like, the English version. I hand it to them. I'm like, just so you know, I have a glory in my grave. Right? And then and then if I get them for with it, then, like, you know, I got them. But, you know, anyway, ramble over. Well, see, the funny thing is that card is a gotcha card because it is, it's also a gotcha to me because the amount of times <laughs> I would forget I have it in the graveyard. <laughs> is, it, that and, like, you know, anger, all those cards. Dude, I never remember I have those cards in the graveyard. <laughs> the yeah, the challenge is probably getting in the graveyard in some decks, right? Like, that's it's, it, the effect seems very on rate. I was trying to think of, like, what else gives my entire team protection from a color? And it's, like... Three mana stuff, a chroma's blessing and so forth. Like, so you get that repeatedly from your graveyard. That's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Like, you can use it every turn. You can use it multiple times a turn. I can sell Richard yeah. on this in one card. Restoration of a ganjo. Yes, yeah. I was going to say that. <laughs> isn't this card, like, so good that you get killed? Because for, what? like, six mana, which is not hard, you get protection from two colors. Which probably makes your team unblockable for anyone. <laughs> like yeah. you can't just let this sit there and be scary, you know? But it's playing mean, zero decks. Yeah, you got it's it's actually zero percent. Yeah, pretty this good. Is... And I you agree. Can, like there are ways to discard in Mono White. You can land tax your way like above the the hand size discard. You can Eigen Joe it. Uh, if you're in if you're in Boros, it's super easy. Like yeah, yeah, Boros is easy. Stuff, then, 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 then you're just playing like with anger, but yeah, I think but this card may be like too scary because really? I would be afraid of it sitting there. If I, if I was a monocolor deck and you you dump that, I'm like, oh boy, like anything coming off the top like can kill me. So we got to kill Tober now, right? Like so. Mm. I I really I like it. Good. I'm gonna have to yeah, play it more. I, I plus I believe in restoration I, of a Jan, a Yandu, okay, wait, wait, so. wait, what's, what's the rest of the cycle? I didn't know this was a cycle beyond. Uh, wonder <laughs> is the blue one for uh, okay, all yeah. creatures that are flying. flying. Anger is red. Anger. Genesis Bra- is no, green. Wait, Valor, wait, isn't Valor the white one? Oh, Valor's these are two cycles, one. aren't they? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah there's two cycles. Um, wait, isn't Wonder Genesis- uncommon? Uh, I think Wonder? so, yeah. No, it's rare now. It got uh, But originally, rarity, right? I originally uncommon. There was so Valor. It gives stuff first strike. Filth, Filth is small. Filth is the black Braun. one. Braun. And green is Genesis. Genesis, you on your upkeep, you can pay three mana if you do return yeah, yeah. a creature card from your graveyard. That Genesis was like, saw like type cycle. two player that, that or whatever. Was actually standard play. A lot. I played mm-hmm. it in my what, solitary what confinement do? deck. 
Swamp Filth walk. gives everything Swamp Walk. And then you have oh, Gron, so you which gave everything Trample. Yes. Yep. That was the uncommon yeah. one of Genesis. Genesis was a rare. Braun yeah. was... I think I think um, they were just like activated... No, not even nine. No. Maybe it was, was activated I think, ability I was the rare. Uh, lesson here, which is probably the, the wrong lesson. Stone. Is whenever you see like half a cycle being played, look at the other half of the cycle. But then you're gonna find like whatever the red force of will is. You're like, what is this hot trash? Like maybe. maybe whoa, whoa, whoa. don't don't right. you dare ever Hyrule talk Kinesis about Shiv and Gorge. Not that bad. All right. Oh Hyrule my Kinesis god. Yeah. Shiv and Gorge is by far the best of that cycle. <laughs> Underrated. Hey, people said Fury was the worst of that cycle when it uh, came out. People. So. Oh, who would say that? I remember. Who would say that? Yeah, me too. Me too. I remember I, that. I remember definitely this. people. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Me as well. It was All like right. the blue one was busted and the red one was trash. <laughs> I, I'm that person. <laughs> okay, Krim, redeem yourself. Bring us home with the last redeem card. Redeem myself. I don't need to redeem my I, my hits. My picks have been hits, and like all my other picks, I'm. You know what? Like, okay, this one also another banger. C double, dude. This card is so good. It's two blue blue, and uh, it's instant speed. And if you're uh, like so. This spell can't be copied. Choose one. If an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, you may choose both. That's one hit with Sword of Body in mind, just saying. Copy target spell. You may choose new targets for a copy. And then, of course, there's a second mode, create token that's a copy of target creature. So, when you ob- if you are a human of culture and have obviously played the best sword and the best artifact, and you've connected with Body in Mind, or other ways, you fill the yard up, you get both of these. Both of these. However... Even if you don't, and you just got one mode, this is still this is a an instant speed clone, right? Its floor is a flash clone. That's amazing. And then and then on top of that, if I get to like let's just say copy a cruel ultimatum and then copy something else, like good lord, this card is overperformed every time I've played it in Commander. And by I... the way, this and Breach are only around two to three bucks right now. I'm just saying. This this I've been on this card since like spoiler season. It's like I think it was one of my picks when we did the March of the Machines favorite cards episodes. Like totally with you until you started saying all the sort of body and mind stuff, and now I hate <laughs> the card. Well, I was about to join you your see, podcast, Krim, but then you ruined it. You just haven't Seriously, opened though. your mind yet. You need to open your mind's eye to understand. You know. Yeah, I'm playing 5D chess out wait, here with Bayern. Are you happy for Bide's Eye now? What's going See, on? Yeah. <laughs> okay, not that card. Not that, that card is terrible. But Seriously, though, this card's really good. Like, yeah, I yeah, think this. I know we try. Don't say staples or whatever, but I, I would jam this in just any blue deck. Like, even discounting the self mill and stuff, I think it's good enough you can jam it in any blue deck, and then it goes up in value if you're. You know, playing a Grim deck and roguing or sort of body and minding and filling the graveyard. But even with that, I think it's, hard. it's unless, worth unless it. Unless someone yeah. Fairweld, like eight cards just naturally. Fetch well, lands and stuff. Right? People like, are like, filling the graveyard with glories and stuff, right? <laughs> like, I, and I people, eight cards is actually not that hard. And people play a lot of big bombs in Commander. Like, I live in Standard because everyone's playing at Troxa and getting a four mana at Troxa is like hilariously powerful. People play really big, strong stuff in Commander, so four mana to get your opponent's seven or eight drop or whatever is, that's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. There is a downside that it's four mana and you gotta leave up the mana, so it probably is at its best in, in Crim decks where you're gonna be leaving up your mana for other things anyway. But worst case, like, four mana is not a bad rate for a clone. Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of the growing I, way I, and you get all that upside. Well, if you don't keep up your mana, then you just pay four mana clones. Play like a sorcery right. speed like, clone. Like, yeah. Thing. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. have to keep up mana. This is good in a deck that is, as long as it has blue, right? Like, if it has blue, there's always a mode for it. And it's... There's always like a mode for it. And it's also worth mentioning, like, it copies any spell this isn't like a one of those traditional like copy instant or sorcery or something like you can the copy permanence any permanence that you want i get an ugin if you get an ugin right like i mean something along those lines like whatever it is you play ristic uh late of course and then (laughs) and then i play this i get to copy it right so like this card is just a staple and it is criminally cheap so i would get these before the world catches on huh i'm Criminal. I'm with you on this one. Yeah, I'm with you on this I, I, one. Eh. <laughs> it's $3. Card, it's $3. This card is like Tomer. super gas and token decks. 
Because oh, it makes, no, it wait. makes I, I, are you the synergies. I can't tell. Add tricks and Nev twin casters as Simic tokens, so you double the tokens that you're making with it. Yeah. I have a Bruticlad paper deck. This card is yeah. gas in it because you make a copy. You make a token of the best thing on the battlefield, and then Bruticlad turns everything into a copy of that thing. So it's like yeah. super good. What if you don't have token synergies? Uh, oh, uh, Garuda, Garuda Storm. Garuda well, okay, Tomer, random blue, random blue deck worth or no? Sea Monster Does, Tribal. Does it go? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> what's, what's... I mean, it's sea monsters. It's got to be good. Ooh, right? it synergizes <laughs> with big sea monsters. Yeah. Does it go into okay. Merfolk? Oh, not Merfolk. Ooh, yeah, uh, why wouldn't it? Moonfolk. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Moonfolk. Well, nothing will make that deck better. But like, I mean, like, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to copy my Moonfolk. That's... Yeah, like then you get <laughs> more Moonfolk, evening. right? <laughs> well, I guess Actually, I can no, copy my no, opponent's better you can stuff. Copy, yeah, your opponent's stuff that isn't a Moonfolk. <laughs> that's good. Like, Whoa. I think you could put this card in any deck and you'd be happy. I wouldn't. I, I I'm synergy fiend, but I, I think it's you could make a case for this any, is a any synergy, deck. synergy though. This it, it synergizes with, with your no, blue with like mana. literally existing. Like, yeah. like if you are at the table and have four blue man, four mana, and two of them are blue, what? it's synergy. I'm saying the card's really good. <laughs> all right, with that, we have successfully united the podcast. We all, <laughs> we all <laughs> yeah, agree. finally, we all agree. You're about C double, double. A blue card, <laughs> Richard. Will you run it in your bird deck? That's no. the ultimate. Why not? What am I going to do? Uh, copy of Fledging Osprey and pay three more mana than I need? You can literally do whatever you want. It's whatever you need it to be. Uh-huh. Why wouldn't you? Let, let's say uh, someone I, plays a Kindred Discovery. You get a Kindred Discovery. I don't need I don't need their cards. My bird deck is powerful enough. <laughs> but I do agree that it's a very good card, and it, it is a blue staple. It's just... Even if they're staples, you still need to look at your deck and make sure it synergizes. And I don't think Birds needs it, but it is a very strong card, and that most decks would play. I would even gander this as an S tier card if we were to rank it. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Mm. All right. Again, uh, just just right now, real quick before we close out, everything from March of the Machine, like so far, there's a lot of stuff there that are Commander gems that are dirt cheap. So this this set has actually been super sweet for Commander. That's yeah. fair. And not the oh, it's built for Commander like every set because you know I know that they are, but like <laughs> this one actually feels like there's a lot of cards I would play. So let us know in the comments what your secret tech cards are, and uh, more importantly, let us know if you're on Team Fog or Team <laughs> what was the card? Filter removal. Out. Yeah. Oh, filter filter out. out. Oh god. Team oh. actually do something or team fog? Yeah. <laughs> call, call it what we it need is. to know which podcast you're gonna yeah. follow. <laughs> so let us know in the comments and uh, we'll see you all back here next week. <laughs>